theater. So what I did uh, when the uh, when the when the Quebec Charter of Values and uh, Abdul Wahed often says, well, it's not a charter, <laughs> you know, it's, and he's right, but let's, you know, just call it the way it was called. So when the Quebec Charter of Values and then Bill 60 appeared, I was uh, taken with this uh, great motivation to try to conduct a pilot project just to see uh, what are people's perceptions of, of this charter. Now, unfortunately, I had very little money to do that, but this is no problem, researchers, uh, sometimes are used to working in, uh, in uh, poor conditions. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, but most importantly, very little time <laughs> because the elections were, uh, were déclenchées. Sorry for my, um, well, I'm going to shift from French to English sometimes. I'll go with the easiest, so um, I think you will allow me to do that. And so just to tell you that we conducted this pilot project within a, 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 t a very short time frame. So I chose to do it with UCAM students because that was the most accessible population and ethically uh, it was the fastest process. But it means what it means, we'll, we'll discuss that later. Um, the project is actually uh, consists of two arms. So the study consisted of two arms and I'll set you with the context and objectives. One of it was collecting, uh, creating a database of all the official French and English media discourses around the Charter, around Bill 60, and around the uh, Commission, Parliamentary Commission. So we have this base there. We are currently analyzing the, uh, conducting, we, we have a thematic analysis, and I'll present you with some of the hypotheses, but we are also conducting a critical discourse analysis. I won't be able to present the results today, but it's coming. And a survey uh, that we conducted with UCAM students. So just to, to, uh, to tell you about the objectives, uh, of course, you all those who live in Quebec know about this very polarized and passionate debate around the Charter where it was a bit difficult to, to, to stay, let's say, in the gray zone, not in, not in the two ex ex extremes, sorry. But also, I think, because there was a, a, a media, both a media and maybe a population uh, targeting of certain minorities, of course, Muslim minorities, Muslim veiled women uh, more particularly, but I had, and Cecile, and many of us had the intuition that, based also on previous research that we did, that it could generalize to other minorities, really. And it's just a matter of, of socio current sociopolitical context, international also context, that it happens to be Muslim veiled women. But the, the, the underlying, let's say, fear really generalizes to everything around otherness and the threat of otherness to, to Quebec identity. So despite the fact that uh, our current prime minister said that one of his jobs is to make people forget about the charter, I don't think that <laughs> it is forgettable. I mean, some things leave traces, you know, and, and I think that the question of living together in Quebec uh, is not a new thing and will remain. So I'm trying to rationalize the, the importance of having done the project, basically. Um, we did a very fast media discourse analysis, uh, and what it shows us, of course, is that we can position media discourses around positions, let's say, in favor of the Charter, in disfavor of the Charter, but also a third layer of analysis, which is really a, an over, a consistent overlapping in the media discourse between issues of gender, equality, identity, and security. So if you try to read between the lines sometimes, we were interested in looking at how are these uh, concepts combined and uh, in what way. But this I will not present today, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, positions in support of the Charter, basically, just to remind you of the context, is that first it's a necessary policy uh, in response to the increasing demands of reasonable for reasonable accommodations, that it guarantees the, the very dear principle of equality between genders, that's very dear to, to Quebec and those of, who know Quebec history know about the, um, is the charter uh, a kind of traumatic projection, you know, of, of, of a traumatic past of women's condition. This is something that's interesting, and we had discussed that, I remember, in, in the previous conference. 
Uh, and that it is actually from a perspective of solidarity between women and not, not, uh, not of, of hatred or fear of veiled or other women, but rather in being uh, solidaire and wanting these women to access actually more power. Um, and that secularity comes with the neutrality of the state and this comes with not showing religious symbols. So basically these I'm summarizing, but when we, we go through, when we went through the media, this was, these was the arguments that were presented in support of the Charter. The main arguments that were presented in opposition, let's say, to the Charter, of course, the main political, and they were mostly political and legal arguments, that the Charter uh, is against the, uh, or does not comply with the Canadian Charter of, of Rights and Freedom and that the issue of wearing, so these are some of the words that were taken out from, from some media uh, papers, that the, uh, you know, the ban on wearing conspicuous religious symbols would be a form of state-sanctioned discrimination, uh, a divisive identity politics, or a technique to exploit the anti-immigrant sentiment. So there were very strong words you know, to describe uh, one's opposition to the Charter. Amnesty International had, had uh, provided a, a big argument um, deconstructing, <laughs> let's say, the Charter. And one, one of its main arguments was that uh, it considered absurd the abolition of wearing conspicuous symbols with reference to the principle of gender equality when the abolition might deprive women from accessing uh, economics. So it's simply, you know, Amnesty International simply said, do not use the argument of gender equality. Use uh, the real argument behind it or <laughs> underneath it, because this argument is absurd. But of course, all of us here know that it, it's nothing new. Um, and um, when we, we saw the, let's say, the overlaying of religion, national and, and gender issues is that uh, the government argued that the respect for freedom of religion and gender equality is guaranteed through a secular state, so whose representative must be religiously neutral. And then I read this wonderful text from Abdel Wahad, uh, and I'm taking this from him, uh, who, who is referring also to, to other authors discussing the issue of Catholic secular, secularism. And I have to admit that personally it was like the light bulb. Uh, I, yes, because I, ha I hadn't thought about it this way. Meaning that um, what figures to the majority group as neutral is actually not neutral. It is the inheritance of the transformation of Catholic identity and the way that Catholic identity, I mean Catholic talking about generally the, the French majority because the English Quebecers are more orthodox than, than uh, Protestants or even Catholic, but the way let's say uh, that modern Catholicism or modern Christianity within the dominant majority group is being expressed. And one of, one of this way is that while the Catholic secular majority no longer needs to display it, the religious symbols or practices to, uh, let's say, affirm or live their identity on daily basis, many other religious minority groups wear religious symbols as an inherent uh, daily of practicing and living their religion. So we, we might think about the kippah or the hijab or the kirpa, kirpan, or, you know, many other uh, little signs that, that people wear that are actually an inherent uh, part of their daily identity. Uh, and so this kind of, you see that, I'm, I'm not going deep into it, but I think you see the overlaying of, of issues of how identity is, is expressed and in relation to religion. And so it would not only be a process of secular, secularism, you know, not allowing wearing or, or calling these religious signs as con conspicuous, uh, but possibly a process of assimilation. Uh, but that wasn't stated as such. Maybe that was one of the objectives as well. And uh, thus, by doing this, there is then a clear also opposition between religion and Quebecois identity. So the immigrant felt that, or people, non-immigrant people who practice their religion, and you will see it with the results, there were some interesting things, uh, felt that they had to make a choice. 
either be Muslim or Quebecois, either be Catholic, either be Jewish or Quebecois. So, and it's, I mean, this is an impossible choice to make, right? Um, so, I thought that, well, maybe I can, in a very humble, exploratory fashion, so it's really very uh, pilot data, try to see what young adults really think, not just the media people, uh, but young adults, young university students, you know, I teach in a university and I saw that it was part of their on break discussions, class discussions, so it was there, the youth was, were reacting to it. And just to let you know that people wanted to talk about the charter because we made a web survey and usually participation to web survey is very low and it takes us week, weeks and in two weeks I had 400 participants from UCAM University of students. So they wanted <laughs> to answer that. And believe me, it's not because there were 10, you know, prizes of $20 from Co-op UCAM. It motivates them, but this is not the only reason. They often find that $20 is not enough anymore, these students anyway. So, <laughs> so the sample consists of uh, undergraduate students and uh, 441 participants. Uh, I'm just presenting you a quick look at the sample because I think you need to know that, well, it's uh, predominantly born in Canada, so you have to look really at this to get a very quick picture of the sample, and uh, predominantly citizens and of self-identifying as Quebecois slash Canadian. So, uh, you know, from the majority group, let's say, I, we had little, uh, a, f a smaller sample of foreign students or immigrants or, or others. Um, just, to, you know, do you want me to go in detail about the methods or do I simply skip it, right? It would go faster. Trust me, I did it in all the good rules of research. Um, so I'll... I'll uh, go quick on some results and take a little bit more time for, for those results that mean more to me. But first of all, uh, most of the group identifies as relatively knowledgeable of the charter. So I said, okay, you know, this is, they will give me reliable subjective perceptions. They have read a bit of the charter, they know what I'm talking about. And around 50% is in disfavor. So I have a nice group of you know, a gradation of position or opinion toward the Charter. Which is interesting because then our results may mean a little bit more than if we had only one, you know, one group in one extreme. So, um, one of the interesting results, these are simply descriptive, really, statistics, so they, they are frequencies. But one of the interesting results is the answer to, since the Charter, so all these questions were since the charter, have you, okay, you know, experienced more discrimination, or have you, uh, have you been wearing more religious symbols? Have you, have you, do you have the feeling of being Quebecois? Do you have the feeling of being Canadian? Do you have the feeling of being uh, part of an ethnocultural community, etc.? Minority, I mean, and. Uh, I just want you to look at the numbers that I highlighted, but you can also choose that other numbers are relevant and tell me your opinion about it. But a, a lower expressed feeling of being Quebecois in a dominant Quebecois sample. You know, so this is, this is uh, quite interesting. And also more feeling, you know, speaking more about religion, of course, which is interesting, a secular society, yet dominantly religious discourse, so you know, there's, a, there's an interesting paradox. We talk a lot of what we don't want to talk about. So. And, um, you know, more having the feeling of being Canadian rather than Quebecois. So that's, that's, there's an interesting, these are interesting data to, to go deeper. So this is the exploratory, and then I look at those interesting results to dig deeper into them afterwards. Uh, what is interesting to me is the, the impact of Charter on identity awareness, but as perceived by others. So the question is, since the Charter, do you feel that you are perceived differently? And uh, I think we have a good number of people who say yes. So for, for me, these are interesting numbers. They're still lower than the no, or even equal to the don't know, but still, when you have 26 or 27 percent of a sample who t of 400 people who tell you that they feel that they are perceived differently, then I think it's an interesting thing to 
to look to dig deeper into. Now we have qualitative answers and we are currently analyzing them. So we're asking them, you know, when you differently, what is it about? Could you tell us a little bit more about it? And interestingly, people really filled in those empty spaces that we never fill, right? When we get an opinion questionnaire. Um, and uh, in terms of questions around inter-community relations, um, the, the answer to the question of, you, ha, has it, has it, since the charter, is there a change in your perception of ethnocultural groups or religious groups? Uh, when they say yes, they answer that, well, half of the sample of those who said yes say that their perception of the Quebecois cultural group has changed. So this is very interesting in terms of minority, majority, in terms of identifying too, in terms of you know, integration issues. Uh, but when there is a religious group that is perceived differently, it's mostly Muslims that are perceived differently. Now, I ha don't have the full qualitative uh, data, so I can't tell you how, <laughs> in what ways they have been perceived uh, differently, but we can, uh, you know, we can just brainstorm around it if you want. Uh, also, in terms of inter-community relations, and this is very important for me, uh, since the Charter, what is your vision of the future of inter-community relations? Before the Charter, 10% 10, 10 of the sample reported that they had a negative perception, and since the Charter, this increased to 51.7%, which is really a very big number. We're talking about university students, usually pretty optimistic, active uh, students who have this still illusioned passion that they can actually change the world uh, before they get disillusioned. <laughs> so that's, that's quite, you know, that's quite interesting. It would be interesting to do a study post non-charter <laughs> to see if this perception has changed to a more positive one, but it does, uh, you know, it, it does speak of, of the situation. Forget about this red thing here, at, I'll, uh, they were uh, actually most of the associations were significant. Well, simply to tell you that um, you know the more positive people who had more. I mean, this is this is logical. People who had more positive perception of the charter reported more positive perception of future of intercommunity relations. Uh, you know, uh, few, uh, reported less discrimination. However, people who had more positive perception of the charter had a more negative perception of the veil. And so there is, I mean, we were not hallucinating, there is a link between the charter and the issue of Muslim veiled women, because, you know, I'm a Muslim woman, I'm not veiled, so, so I'm okay. Or I often get the answer of, well, you're not like them, you're not, you're not, like, you're not a typical Muslim. Well, you know what, maybe I am, <laughs> you know? Who knows? So, um, in terms of comparative data, I found that in this university, university sample, males had a more positive perception of the charter and a more negative perception of, uh, of the veil, of veiled women, uh, whereas females had a more negative, a slightly more negative perception, but the results are significant. And of course, uh, those born in Canada had a more positive perception uh, of the charter and reported less discrimination. So actually, when the score is higher for discrimination, it means less, because we, we oriented all towards positive scores. Uh, citizens also reported lower levels of discrimination than non-citizens. Those who identified as Quebecois Canadian reported lower, lower levels of discrimination and a, a better perception of intercommunity relations, or let's say were more optimistic about the impact of the charter on community relations. But interestingly, those who ident had a double identification, meaning they said, I'm Quebecois and let's say Haitian, or I'm Canadian and uh, I don't know, uh, Moroccan, uh, and, and the others, so those who identified only as non-Quebecois or non-Canadian, uh, reported a more negative perception of intercommunity relation and more discrimination, and the difference between them was not significant. So it seems that once you have a second uh, identification, 
then you are different from those who solely identify as Quebecois. Even if you identify as Quebecois, you seem to, they seem to be closer to those who identify only as, let's say, other than Quebecois. And this is where I want to attract your attention. Uh, actually, a big proportion of the sample uh, to the question of uh, to, what, to which religious groups you identify answered that they were agnostic atheists. And their score comes out as different from the Catholic and those who identified others, Muslim, uh, Zoroastrian, uh, uh, Jewish. And they had a better perception of intercommunity relations, lower perception of discrimination. And what I want to attract your attention to is that the difference between those who identified as Catholic and those who identified as from another religious group was not significant. Meaning that the religious practicing or the majority who identified as Catholic also felt dissatisfied with the charter. And this is very interesting because it seemed to be more, um, let's say I'm exaggerating by saying, but I'd like an atheist project, you know what I mean? But it isn't. But it seemed to satisfy mostly people who identify as being uh, agnostic or atheist. And the, the Quebecois Catholic, or those who identify as such, felt a little bit threatened also by the Charter. I think it's interesting to attract attention to these results because it helps unpolarize the debate, you know, between Muslim minorities and, you know, Quebecois majority. Even the Quebecois majority situation is more complex than we think regarding the Charter. So these quickly are uh, generally the, re the results of this pilot project. Of course, as I said, we're still in the, the critical discourse media analysis and there is qualitative um, analysis of, of uh, participants' comments that we are going to add, so it will add kind of flesh to the bones. But if I, I take with you the, the results that I feel we should dig on or we should discuss, first keep in mind that it's you know, a predominantly French Quebecois Canadian sample, so it, it should be, if we had the time to redo it, of course we would do it with a more representative sample, you know that. Uh, that the perception of the charter was negative in approximately half of the population, which means that if we are interested in the future of living together in Quebec, well, we should stay interested and keep doing research because we have divisions in the opinions of people. Uh, but that the charter seems to have led an, in, to an increase in displayed ethnic and religious symbols. And this is, from a clinical uh, point of view, very interesting because we do get uh, at the C3S some, um, some young college or school students, uh, girls who decide to wear the veil just because, you know, as, as a way of actually redeeming power. Uh, but also, uh, we were starting to have um, veiled, let's say, veiled groups who would pressure others into it as a way of social action or social resistance. So I think, you know, clinically it's also a very interesting result. But as well as the issue of, let's say, the salience of perceived identity. So uh, people become more conscious of being different, while they were not as conscious of being let's say, uh, Lebanese or Iraqi or, uh, I don't know, Japanese uh, before the charter. So there is like an, uh, quite a significant increase of the self-awareness of one's difference. And when there is a change of perception of ethnic groups, it's mostly the Quebecois group itself. But uh, religious groups, it's really mostly Muslims. But I want to attract your attention to the fact that 24.6% also reported a change in the perception of other religious groups. So there is a, uh, an underlying current. There is a risk of generalization. Well, for me, actually, it's not generalization. In my opinion, it's been there. It's just different groups come out in time uh, as salient because of local issues. Um, so the xenophobic, let's say, feeling or, or the fear of, of the otherness is not only that of Muslims. And I am personally, I mean, even as, a, as an Arab Muslim, I don't want Muslim groups to take this discourse, you see what I mean, to build on it and to feed this feeling of, 
well, the group is being discriminated against, the group is, because then it becomes also a strategy of segregating oneself from the majority community. And, and it becomes a, a, you know, a, a struggle of power around accessing power and privilege. So I, I think we have to, I mean, I'm talking this from, as I said, an Arab Muslim stance, I think we also have to be careful. And then it feeds the, the general feeling of you know, a traumatized, a minority group, you know, a, a persecuted, let's say, it feeds the feeling of persecution, which may only justify or bring fuel to the integrist movements, you know. So we have to also be careful, be responsible as a group, uh, you know, to responsibly use the media fueling discourses. Um, males have a better perception <laughs> of the charter and a more negative perception of the veil, but maybe what's most interesting is that negative perception of the veil is associated with positive perception of the charter. So we were not hallucinating. There was really something there. And those not born in Canada, not citizens, who do not identify as Quebec Canadians report more discrimination in relation to the charter, more negative perception, and uh, a more negative perception of intercommunity relations since the charter. Perhaps the most interesting results for me are that those who report any religious group identification being Catholic or other report a more negative perception of intercommunity relations since the Charter, uh, and that there is a drastic shift in the perception of the future among uh, a rather positive-oriented uh, sample. And uh, yeah, I said it, uh, the issue of the veil. So um, simply, for me, um, these, you know, these are very salient results that we need to dig into and try to understand why and how it can be used. And uh, for now, I can tell you that the critical discourse of the media is really giving us, uh, I would say, a little bit of sad <laughs> results. So there, there really seems to be a monolithic you know, image of, of the Muslim women that is portrayed in media as, as a person that's you know, devoid of, of, of agency and power to act with really ignorance of, as Jaswan and Lawrence ha have highlighted in, in one of their texts, the multiple layers of complexity underpinning and, and choices underpinning why women decide to wear or not uh, the veil. And I, I, might, I will end only with, with a question that came across my mind. Um, would the reaction toward veil women had been so massive had they not reacted with power? Meaning, had they reacted as a submissive group that really needs to be liberated, would the aggressive discourse toward them uh, had been as strong uh, compared to the fact that they reacted by saying, yes, we're veiled, and it is not incompatible with, uh, with women's uh, you know, conditions and we want to stay veiled and we want to, to affirm our Islam. So they kind of bifurcated from the, from the colonized, you know, from the we will save you image. And maybe this also uh, made the reaction right, really more massive or more strong. So you don't want to be like us? Well, we'll you, know, you don't want to fit into the way <laughs> we perceive you should be liberated. You want to be liberated in your own way? Well, be it, but outside of, of our own sphere. So, but that's a question that came to my mind. Voila, thank you very much. <laughs>